putting it down with Paul and Will. So they're doing what, 100, 150? Or is it 112? K per month? Uh, right. We're, we're at, like, going to be about 130? 140. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And you guys have been scaling what, from 20, is it 20K or 30 before we met? We, I think our, our best month before we met was probably 20. And then when we began the program, uh, we had uh, in August, I think a 30K month, which was then our best. Um, another sort of 20 or 30K in September. And then, yeah, we've, we've sort of exploded in, in October and had our yeah, best month by a long way. Okay. So uh, this interview, we just want to like find out what, what they did. Like, uh, I know for a fact, like why they're successful because they took action, but uh, more importantly, like what is the, like, not mindset shift, like what is the exact tactic or strategy that they use to change? Because like 20 to 150K is a seven times increase. So it's not uh, like, <laughs> it's out of the ordinary, you know what I mean? So like stuff like this, success stories like this, like definitely need to learn from them. And I uh, just want to hear their story and stuff. Okay, so I mean, um, now we just want to first, Will, can you share your screen to show uh, proof? Because yeah. like um, a lot of people are skeptical and stuff. But yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> so this is our what is it? So this is our this this month of mm -hmm. October. So it's 145k, and I think we've done about $700 of returns. And then this was our previous month. So yeah. We went from yeah twenty k to one hundred and forty, mm. I guess in a month. Okay, so the inflection point was like twenty twenty second September around there, right? Yeah, when we started to, I think we launched our our new product. I think around like yeah twenty fifth of September or so, and then we started to scale it towards the end of September and then into October. Okay, understood. Yeah. Okay, so noise, I'll, I'll block uh, all the stuff, all the yeah, information. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Do, you, um, do we need to look at anything else? Uh, what, Maybe show the lifetime as well. Oh, uh, yeah. So this is... Because um, we've had this store since um, we late started March. In March, I think. Mm -hmm. Selling the same product for about six months, and then we sort of have just recently changed it. So it sort of shows... Yeah. Uh, so this is since we started in March. Okay, and what's what's the overall profit margin for? Um, I think check lifetime. That'll that'll have it. I I think the overall profit margin would probably be. I know uh, for the dashboard, so twenty four percent. Yeah, and previous months we were probably hovering between ten and fifteen. So I'd say. Um, overall profit margin would probably be about fifteen percent, but twenty five percent for October. Okay, so I mean, now now yeah. that you guys got scale, you just need to drive down that cost, uh, right? And just be more efficient on the ad spend. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Even the last the, the last couple of days, we're seeing um, for the last week or so, we're seeing cost per click go up. Mm. Um, obviously, we're we've got election times, we're heading into Q4. So we're seeing our CPMs, uh, even if we're looking inside the ad sets as well, the auction competition's going up a bit. Mm. Um, so we're just in the process of, uh, basically we've sent the product to about five or six different people to get um, their own sort of content. So UGC and hooks and testimonials, and we're gonna sort of mash that up um, and refresh our creative um, to make sure we can sort of keep scaling in November and December. Okay, that's good. Uh, yep. Q4, you just need to ramp up ad spend even though the CPMs increase and then just try to maximize AOE as I told you, told you before. Yeah. So. yeah. So we're, the other thing we're doing as well is we, we have sort of frequently bought together on our page too and uh, some post-purchase upsells. So we're um, split testing at the moment or we will start split testing some different bundles um, to see which is more preferable. Um, and we're using reconvert as our post-purchase upsell, but as soon as um, OCU 
is becoming part of Shopify's native checkout. As soon as that's done, we're going to switch to one click upsell. So that should hopefully get us another sort of five or ten percent revenue at the back end um, to assist as well. Okay, Ken, sorry, but I think you can hear my construction song right <laughs> in the back. <laughs> no, yeah. right. Okay, no, it's Ken. All right. So I mean, I just want to understand uh, you guys like um, you guys friends. How, how do you guys met? How do you start the this e-commerce business together? Uh, we met in school actually, so we've known each other for a while now. I think it's been almost ten years. I think. Yeah. Yep. So, um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, we never talked about I don't know going into business or anything in school. I guess. Like, uh, I went into, we both did uni, I guess. Uh, and we were like friends through uni and everything. Like we traveled together, whatever. It wasn't until I think towards the end of last year, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. We might've started talking about it in passing, I guess. And then at the start of this year, I think we like sat down and said, yeah, we could definitely, um, do something together. Cause I was definitely interested in something like this, but I was like still learning, didn't really know where to start. I don't know about you, Paul. I think you were sort of in the same yeah. boat, I guess. So we, I, I think with myself, I built a couple of stores uh, late last year in December. Um, not with, not with Will, just on my own. And I was getting sort of a few sales here and there and a few profitable days, but I was still very much a beginner and didn't really know exactly what I was doing. Um, and then what ended up happening was I had a really busy period with my full-time job um, in January. And then I found out Will was actually trying to do a coffee e-commerce business um, as well. <laughs> yeah. And so I sort of said to him, oh, look, you know, I'm, I'm sort of still a beginner in this, but I'm quite sure with coffee, like, it's going to be quite difficult as a beginner to get that up and running. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sort of doing drop shipping at the moment. We should sort of team up um, and work together. So I think we decided March, we were just going to build a store together. We, I, I didn't think it was any, anything formal, like I oh, will work together long-term. I think we just had the plan of building one store together and seeing how it went. And then luckily that first product we did was actually um, the product we were, we were advertising for about six months so um yeah so that, that's sort of how we ended up working together we we've always been friends we've, we've never spoken about building a business together and i think it was just by chance that we decided to build a store together but now we're starting to segment a little bit of what we um are both focusing on and i think it'll be a, a much more long-term endeavor now that we're going to take it a lot more seriously and, and work together long term. Because you guys are still working full time, right? Both of you. Are. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, but it what, works yeah. really well because Will works in hospitality. So he's, um, his family owns a restaurant. So he works in a restaurant. Um, and that may, that means his hours are quite like scattered across the weekend and weeknights, but he's got most of the day free. Whereas I work just a, a normal sort of nine to five job. Um, so I usually work on the business before and after work, whereas Will works on it while I'm working and then we get most of the weekends as well. So it actually works out in terms of like a momentum thing. It works really well. So sort of really good to shut the laptop after work. And then you've had all this work done as well. Cause Will's been working on it during the day. If there's like supplier or customer service issues, Will's straight on it because he can work with the supplier during the day while I'm working and then vice versa when he's working. So it actually works out uh, really well for us. Okay. What, what is the, because when I, I know for a fact, it's like when you work nine to five, it's like you are fixed, your fixed income, right? It's very secure. You, you don't feel uh, pressure. Like why, yeah. <laughs> why even start a business? Um, I don't know. For, for, I'll, I'll let Will answer because it's probably different. Um, answers for me i had st started i sort of knew that there was more money to be made than in corporate world just through things i'd done mm -hmm. through uni so i had a bit of a i had a personal training business in uni where i would literally just find rich housewives and train <laughs> them at their home for 40 minutes and they would pay me 80 to 100 dollars for that 40 minutes um 
and that was at uni. So I thought, okay, well, there's, there's obviously other ways to make money. You don't just have to work in a corporate job. Um, but then I never really took any, any other business idea seriously. And then I think I just had a couple of really poor experiences at work uh, regarding just working really long hours, um, not great bosses, uh, not great working cultures. And then I thought, well, you know, I can't really do this for the next 40 years. Something has to give. So it was probably through that <laughs> a little bit of pain, I guess, where I thought, well, yeah, the only other alternative is starting a business. So that's, that's why I wanted to do it. Um, yeah, for me personally, like my parents have had a like brick and mortar business for like 20 years. And so like, I've kind of like grown up in a restaurant. So like, you can see like, like everyday activities, you can see like where the pain points are in running a business and everything. And I guess like I've always wanted to, you know, work for myself, run your own business, but like watching my parents build their brick and mortar business, you can see a lot of like, uh, I guess shortcomings, like areas where I thought running an e-com business could, um, could yeah, succeed maybe. in this like current climate, I guess. Mm. That's where like I got my interest for e-com from. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Why? Uh, what's the call? Where is the? Because you guys went in together, uh, January and stuff, right? So um, when you got a bit of traction, what was like the biggest difficulty that you faced together at that point? Because Paul, you already was, uh, you already doing some sales, right? Then Will, when you came in, so what? What was the struggle to scaling up to really big numbers? Um, um I mean. I I guess when we first, when, when we started selling um, our first products pretty well in March, we probably had a couple of opportunities where we could have really scaled up a bit harder than what we did. And I think the first thing was just uh, probably cash flow and a bit of fear, mm. I reckon. We had never really spent much money on ads and um, mm. we didn't really have, we had only put in a little bit of our money each into a bank account we didn't have a credit card so we were sort of limited by what our cash flow was so we probably couldn't scale up any harder than than what we did at the time um and then around may i think it was late april and may our return on ad spend was actually really good but we sort of got caught in the middle of um when the covid shipping prices skyrocketed mm. so <clears throat> That, that, that meant our break even um, or our margins took a real hit. And, uh, and I think our break even re return on ad spend was two for a, for a period of time, um, which sort of makes it difficult to scale to higher ad spend. Um, the other thing is, to be honest, I think we just lacked the skills. So we did, we, we were just like, we were beginner media buyers. Um, so we didn't really know what to do to push it to higher spends. And then we, we're also beginner marketers. So, you know, it's, it's fairly easy to get to sort of $500 a day, a thousand dollars a day, but to get to anything more than that, you know, everything has to be, you know, a bit more optimized than what it was. So mm -hmm. our landing pages weren't as good. Our creative wasn't as good. Our offer wasn't as good. So it was, it was probably a combination of, of, of those three things, to be honest. Okay. I'm sure. Then how, how, how did you find me then? <laughs> because, uh, um, scattered around Facebook. So I'm not like post, posting consistently and stuff. What's the... Um, yeah. I, 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 I found you because uh, I remember you put a case study in the Ecom Empires group. I okay. can't remember the exact case study, but it was... Yeah. Uh, I think I watched it as well. You filmed like a video yeah. and it was like how you scaled your store and it was like a 30 minute video. I think in like June or something. Yeah. And then I think I watched that one as well. And I was like, oh, who is this guy? Cause like, I've never, yeah. Like I'd never heard of you and stuff. And I was like, it's pretty amazing. Like you could take a store to like, a, like seven figures that quickly, basically. Okay. I'm sure. Yeah. So I think I, I, I ended up joining and I think Will did as well. Your free group. Um, after we saw that, that case study video um and then 
you know, we were, we were just, you know, we we're in, we we're in a whole bunch of different e-com groups. And then I saw your post about um, doing like a, you know, your, your paid sort of program. And that was when we were stuck at about $20,000 revenue a month. Um, and I messaged Will and I said, Oh, look, this guy really knows his shit. Like, I, um, you know, from the case, from the case study, it wasn't your typical case study. You sort of went right in depth. Um, it wasn't the typical like value posts that we all know yeah. in those e-com groups. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Bad value. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I, I think I, I messaged you, and I was actually re reluctant to do it because I thought it might work better for branded e-com. Um, and obviously, we're still doing. You know, we've moved to a three PL in China now, but technically still doing sort of generic products that anyone can do. So drop shipping. Um, and I think there was a bit of back and forth between us and you sort of said, Oh, look, it, it, it's, uh, um, you know, it will definitely help. And then I sort of chatted to Will about it. Will was happy to do it. Um, and then we got in involved that way, but yeah, it all started really from that case study, I think in the e-com empires group. And then we, we joined your free group and, and um, all your sort of posts and knowledge, uh meant that we were trustworthy of, of your knowledge um and therefore we were happy to go mm. and, and be mentored by you and then i and, and to be honest i i'm I, i've sort of seen other people who have had success quickly and a lot of them have said like oh the quickest way to success is just paying someone who knows a lot more than you do so you can basically absorb it quicker yeah rather than just trial and error which was what we were doing to begin with a lot yep. of trial yeah. and error and figuring it out on our own so I mean, like, um, first like, first time I hit like 100k a month, right? Then I'm like, holy shit as well. Then like, once you got to another level, getting from 100 to 300k a month is harder, harder than going from zero to 100. So, um, when you scale, <laughs> when you go to the next level as well, it's, it gets harder and harder. So, mm -hmm. I guess what is your when you were going from 20 to to the first 100, right? What is the tactic or what's the strategy? Do you think that really shifted the or is it something that I really taught you that, hey, this is the strategy that actually works. We have one landing page, one offer, then we just run smash traffic. Like what, what changed between when you guys were doing it yourself when uh, versus, you know, after the, the program? Um, um, I think you definitely gave us like uh, really good SOPs to follow. So like we could, and then it sort of taught us like, Cause I think at the start we were kind of just like, we were just guessing basically like we put this here, 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 mm. is, is this working? We never really like, we didn't understand like split testing, optimizing pages or anything. And like kind of like looking at what you gave us really helped us with that. And it, like, I think it, it was also just like, just learn our learning curve in general, I think um, helped us to just like better understand like what it is that the metrics Actually, are. like what is an offer mm. what is like the messaging that we want to get across to people and like how to optimize that i guess and so i think that was for me i think that was the most eye-opening thing and like the most important thing to take us from like the 20 20k months to like 100 okay yeah that's it how how, how yeah. often do you sorry paul you go ahead yeah oh, i mean i was i was just gonna say a similar thing like we we had a general structure of what we what we did with a, a landing page when we launched a product and we had a general structure of creative um but yeah I, honestly it was it was mostly your sops that were sort of uh modeled on the absolute best landing pages as soon as we started uh, molding our landing pages around that and our messaging and our offer our conversion rate sort of skyrocketed um and then that just let us spend a lot more money on ads basically um yeah and, and, and even even some of the stuff like when i i think there was an interview with um i think his name's brian and mm -hmm. he was talking about just creating really really good offers um i think when we made that switch from like offering the product as like okay here's a product um and 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 started offering it as like here's a solution to the customer's problem um and sort of started to reframe it that way that's when we found more success that's it does it feel different at 100k per month <laughs> is there oh no uh, 
Not, not, re- not really. <laughs> not really. Yeah. Yeah. Just more money in the bank account. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Like, how, how, how much time do you guys spend on your store now? Or is it now is more thinking about uh, business development and just growing? Um, we, we, I mean, the other thing that you help, helped us with is, is we, we, were, we hired a VA straight away. Mm. As soon as, you know, even when we probably weren't, uh, when you were looking at our numbers and like what we were doing, we probably shouldn't have been hiring a VA. But I think that was a big change as well because as soon as a lot of those customer service tickets are taken care of, it gives you more thinking time mm. for the business. And it's... Um, yeah, so that, that 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 was another thing, um, as well. Yeah, sorry. What was what was the question again? <laughs> I I kind of forgot as well. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. No. No. It's like, how much time do you spend? Yeah. Ah, you, you answered yeah. it. Yeah. 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 We still spend a fair bit of time, to be honest. Um, oh. I would say, uh, I would say it's at least. You know, it's, it's 20, most of the weekend and, hours. and then a few hours every day. So I would say anywhere between like, you know, 20 to 30 hours a week yep. um, yeah. each as well. <laughs> so, um, yeah, in ter- we're still sort of, because we're, we're always trying to get better. So we're always running a new split test. We're always um, getting new creatives done. Um, and then we probably had a few issues with our supplier the last couple of weeks, the last couple of weeks with that, with that holiday. And then just getting the supply used to doing high volume that, that probably increased the workload a little bit. Yeah. Um, our plan really, like our, our plan is we know it's going to be hard work for the next few months um, until the new year. But our, our plan that we've sort of decided to make is just um, try and make as much money as we can over the next three months. And then, probably spend January of next year basically getting it down all our processes in the business and mm-hmm. trying to hire as much as possible to cover for that so that Will and I are basically just either managing VAs um, or finding um, new products or, or, or running split tests um, and, and sort of focusing on higher level stuff. Yep. Yeah, understood. I actually think you guys should just um, you because you have so much data so that you've got the email list already so you can just diversify into other traffic source plus products as well and then if you want to yeah. run Google Ads then make it stable you know what I mean yeah so yeah yeah that's that's no, the thing. So I've, I've got, got that I was yeah. <laughs> just gonna say I've um I've got on the to do list today to set up all the <laughs> the Google shopping for um all our different products as well so just in case yeah. Facebook starts to take a hit or our, you know, a lot of ad accounts have been getting banned for no reason because of election time. So I'm sort of just waiting for the day where we wake up in the morning and our accounts being banned. And <laughs> so we're set, yeah, I'm, I'm setting up all the Google shopping stuff today. Okay. Yeah. I, for, for me, I, I don't know about you, but like I feel skill set because like to be able to do numbers, you need skill. It's not luck. It's not just winning product. So I think for me, it's copywriting. But what, what do you guys think for your side? Uh, you got yeah, I think it's yeah, definitely mainly copywriting and how you can get your message across to the customers so they'll actually like listen to you. Like why make them like why should they care about what you're offering them? Because like everyone's selling products, but it's like why why should I like give my money to you, I guess. I think that is like really important. Yeah. And then the probably yeah. the other thing I think for me was just like just setting up systems that other people can follow so you can automate like as much as possible. I think those were basically the two things that I learned. Sorry, Paul, you're going to say something. Yeah. I mean, I, I was going to say something similar. I think we've both started reading um, a lot of books on consumer psychology and like, you know, all those say old sales letter and advertising books. Um, because I think when we when we both started in March, we kind of had the impre- like we 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 knew we were never rubbish dropshippers like you know terrible product pages or anything like that. We were all because you know we we were always making sales and and stuff like that. We never we it wasn't as if we were starting from bottom of the barrel. Like we had that basic understanding 
um because we had both done other stuff before um but i think we, we still didn't really understand why people purchased something and what would make them purchase so yeah i, I definitely think our, our skill set has has deepened but by the same token i feel like i don't know if you feel the same will but like the more you do um and i guess the high the higher level you get you then get exposed to people doing even bigger things and then you start to realize how little you know yeah um, yeah so i feel like we've grown our skill set we yeah i feel like we've grown our skill set and we we sort of understand why people purchase and and we're you know getting better as business owners but then yeah the more podcasts we listen to or the more people are exposed to doing bigger numbers where we're sort of understanding or realizing that um we've still got a long way to go <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i mean the, the, the people doing 300 k per day and then they just don't they don't say anything <laughs> yeah so yeah 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 and and yeah, I, exactly. it's it's not uh what's it called the, these people like uh the higher you get the less well known you want to be that's that's what i learned as well yeah yeah yeah, definitely. Um, I think the, th the thing now is I'm starting to realize that it's, it's really to do it consistently. It's just about cr creating repeatable processes um, and so you can just do it over and over again. So I suppose that'll be the next challenge for us is we've had one good month now, mm. but you know, both of us want to do this full time. So the challenge for us is to pick it up with another month and then another month Yep. and do it over and over again like like clockwork rather than just one one month yeah. and then <laughs> never be seen again <laughs> yeah yeah i remember one, one of the calls right uh i think paul you mentioned this is like you feel like you can do anything and then i i know that feeling as well because it's like very liberating when you know how to run traffic and then you can just make money in any environment right yeah. So, I mean, I, I think you feel the same way, like how, what's your, what's the next step for you? Because now, now that you have skill acquisition, right, then now it's what's the next step for you guys? I mean, in my mind, our, the, the next step is, is, is basically getting our skill and knowledge into re repeatable processes and then just all the bottom of the barrel, tar not bottom of the barrel, but all, all, all the tasks that we sort of spend a lot of time doing now we just sort of take take away from ourselves. Um, and to be honest, another thing that we haven't really been doing consistently is, is testing new products, testing um, new creators. It's only been sort of the last month that we've really picked that up. So I think to, yeah, to increase consistency, it's about um, just getting just getting quicker with things um, and, and that, that, that comes from hiring to replace ourselves so that we're working on higher leverage tasks but then so we're basically systemizing everything like clockwork so if we want to go down like the you know make as much money as possible drop shipping route then we're testing a certain number of products every single week yes um, or if we want to go down like the branded e-commerce route then we're testing like a certain number of creators each week for a product or, you know, how, how we really want to take it, whatever, what, what, whatever is the next step, which we sort of have to both think about whether we want to do sort of more branded e-commerce or try and keep doing drop shipping. Um, I think it's just about making sure that we can um, do the higher leverage tasks over and over again. And that, that only comes from hiring other people to do the, to do the, the lower level stuff and managing them properly um yeah we haven't taken any money out of the business yet like we, we don't really need to which is good because we're both still working which has been a, a luxury and we both you know mm, maybe if we're yeah, 20 or 21 yeah. we might want things like gold chains or cards like the <laughs> insta, insta e-com gurus do but okay we don't really care about that stuff so um we can yeah we have the luxury we can use that money to hire people and then just keep growing the business and what's your inclination so far is it more okay i, I go brand it all the way or do i still drop ship in yeah um, um i think for me personally i would like obviously 
the real money to be made is to sell brands at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Like if we could slowly build up a couple of brands and then eventually sell them off in a couple of years. So I don't know, for me personally, like it's good to drop ship, but also like to build a couple of brands along the way and mm-hmm. still like then just automate as much of these tasks as we possibly could. That's just how I feel personally. Yeah. And, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. I mean, my, my, uh, I guess my thinking is we, either way, either way we go, whether we um, go the drop shipping route or the, the branded route, I think either way we just have to go all in on either one because they're but they're still slight they're they're slightly different um, things. I guess like drop shipping, it's all about testing products, being quick, scaling yeah. hard, scaling fast, whereas the branded e-com route is is more like, you know a real focus on customer experience. It's um, testing lots of different creatives. It's really optimizing the whole process and it's a slower um, process that I guess is more rewarding at the end when you you might sell it compared to drop, drop shipping. You're not really selling anything. You're just trying to make as much money as possible yeah. in a short amount of time. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think, you know, whatever route we go down, I think we just have to be com- fully committed to that because I feel like if we sort of go half half like oh we'll keep doing drop shipping but then we'll try and build this brand on the side then I think that's probably a recipe for disaster I think yeah the, the more focused we are on what, what whatever path we go down the better it's going to be yeah, I'm sure you guys are still working full time is there a dollar amount you're looking for to transition or is it <laughs> is it still um... half in half out I don't, I don't really have a dollar. I think like, well, Paul kind of said this a while ago, like when we'll kind of know when we're, when we're ready to transition out, I guess, of our full-time jobs. I don't know whether it's like where our company is like fully automated. We have like key people in each like area of the business. And I guess like, yeah, I don't know. I haven't really put a dollar. I don't know if you've thought about this, Paul, but I haven't really put a dollar amount on it, but I guess we'll just kind of know when we're ready to transition fully to um, uh, to doing e-com full-time, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the, I guess the way I, I haven't put a dollar amount on it yet, but I feel like we probably both need to sit down and do it Yeah. <laughs> at, at one stage, just because uh, I, I sort of know with this, this thing and I've um, heard other people talk about it as well, where they sort of, they they'll always move the goalpost you know further and further away so it'll be like all right well we'll need to replace our income okay now it's we need to three, be three times our income oh now it needs to be five times <laughs> like, yeah you just sort of keep moving the goalpost further and further until you're kind of running away from the the painful choice which is well as soon as you take away that stable income it's like it's kind of yeah you've got to make it work or yeah. Yeah, <laughs> or on the line. Yeah, so I think we both need to s- figure out a dollar amount. But um, to be honest, I've sort of had in my in my head that if we can continue at this rate for the next couple of months, then we would have enough cash in the bank um, to do it to do it full time for to basically give us a runway of at least like six or twelve months. Um, and then I'll, I think if we were to commit to it full time um, with the increased capacity we have and more, more energy to spend on things, I think we would then see more success rather than yeah. all of a sudden the business crashes and burns and we don't have any money for six months and we have to go back and find jobs. Yeah. Yep. But I think it's still a mental barrier for us. Like, yeah, we've always had a stable income. So, um, yeah, that's probably the next the next yeah. step for us so but even that, transitioning yeah. into part-time potentially as well so you know rather than going like oh we either quit or we stay working full-time potentially both of us go oh we'll just take like part-time jobs and then for three or six months see how that goes and if that goes well then okay we quit on this day yeah i'm sure okay i just last question since there's not enough time but yeah. <laughs> uh, i i know you guys very very intrinsically motivated already like that's not an issue right but do you think okay i cut the nets 
cut the safety net and then okay, this, you know, when you like really need something to work, then you like do all you can. Do you think that's like, <laughs> or nah? <laughs> um, I think that would be a factor for sure. Um, uh, yeah, I, I think once you cut, like once you cut the safety net and it's do or die, like you, you definitely like get shit done just because you, you, you sort of yeah, have to. Yeah, like you have, yeah, you have to like now, <laughs> if you like leave it an extra day, it's okay. But like when we're, our only income's coming from the business, I guess you're like, okay, this has to be done like right now. I can't like push it back another day, you know, because this is like to pay the bills now, I guess. Yeah. It changes your mindset a little bit. But then again, it's like, what 